Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and I'm autistic and have ADHD. In this video, I wanna talk a little bit about RSD. It's also known as rejection sensitive dysphoria. Um, I debated about whether or not to even do a video today because again, I am kind of in burnout. I really need to rest, but sometimes making videos actually rejuvenates me a little bit. Um, and I don't know if I just really need to turn off my brain and lay down and have as much rest as I can. But I don't know. I just wanted to talk and make the video. So here we are. Um, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> I am the kind of person I struggle with just slowing down. And even when I'm in burnout, and a lot of that is internalized ableism and I am working through it. <sighs> but in the meantime, here we are. So rejection sensitive dysphoria, I'm going to read a little bit posted by the Cleveland Clinic about what it is. It says it's a problem that interferes with your ability to regulate your emotional responses to feelings of failure and rejection. While rejection is almost always unpleasant, people with RSD experience overwhelming levels of emotional pain. And it's really common for people with ADHD and autism to have RSD also. I when I first heard about RSD, I was like, yes, I definitely experience RSD. And then there was times when I'm like, no, I don't think I do. And maybe it's one of those things where it's a spectrum um, because I think almost everything with the brain is a spectrum. But I also have narrowed down how RSD affects me. And that's why I wanted to share it in this video because maybe you will relate to my experience of it. So... What I have kind of like currently come to terms with is I really have that overwhelming, intense sensation of rejection, emotional pain, like extreme upset in a disproportionate level to like what happened when a couple of things happen. When somebody corrects me, when I don't think I did anything wrong, um, when I am asking a clarifying question or trying to get more information and somebody tries my interpretation of the person's response is that I'm dumb and I should have already known that information or if my autistic sense of justice gets activated. So I'm going to give a, like an example of what kind of happened yesterday to kind of drive this home a little bit more. Uh, I also, before I do that though, and the reason why I wondered before if I really do struggle with RSD, it has to be personal to me. And this isn't for everybody. I know some people with RSD that um, more things can trigger them. For me, when I get like just a random troll on the internet leaving like some mean hateful comment on one of my videos, if it doesn't seem like if they're just like if it just comes across as like oh my gosh this person is just being mean for the sake of meanness it doesn't trigger me at all it just doesn't bother me but for some people with rsd it would bother them um, just because of the fact that they left it on their video i also would get triggered if someone leaves a comment on one of my videos where they are correcting something i said because i go on my way to try to make sure that i'm presenting truthful and real information i am learning out loud so i am going to make mistakes but being corrected on something that i think that i'm saying is correct will trigger rsd for me um, but if it was a friend or somebody close to me that said something like that, then I am going to get that like really intense trigger. In one of my recent videos, I talked about if a friend cancels on me, then I'm going to get a really like a canceled plans. I'm going to get that big, strong emotional response. And again, um, like I said in that video, some of that ties into having CPTSD, um, complex post. 
<sighs> traumatic stress disorder. And yes, I'm laughing because I mean, ASD, ADHD, RSD, CPTSD, like it's an alphabet, but like the reason why it's important is the more things that we understand and there's so many people who are anti-label, but the more times when we can like have words and labels for the internal experience that we are experiencing in ourselves, we can explain that to other people. That's where sympathy and empathy and compassion comes across because otherwise there's no way to explain these internal senses that we're having and it's all observed outside behaviors and then a plethora of miscommunication can happen because especially with RSD, my reaction logically from the outside is completely outside of the scope of the thing that may have happened. So to an outside observer, it's like, what is wrong with you? Why are you reacting like that when internally there's other things going on? So for the example, yesterday there was an autistic content creator who put a video out on TikTok and they started the video with a joke that was supposed to be like deadpan satire. Um, and I did not catch the fact that it was a joke. I thought it was misinformation. It did not. So a common autistic trait is to miss jokes, not understand satire or sarcasm. Like it's really common for autistic people to do that. So, you know, at the beginning of the video, the first sentence that was supposed to be a joke, but instead what they did was they said something that was factually incorrect and from their perspective they were doing it in a satire way to kind of like hook people into the video i read it as why are they spreading misinformation this is like a really big account why are they doing that i didn't accuse them of spreading misinformation what i did was i left a comment that said um can you please explain that first sentence a little bit more I, in fact, know that it's not true, so I'm a little confused. And I just, I like, I wanted their input more of like, why, why, why did you do that? And the creator left a comment back to me and said, it was a silly joke. Those were their exact words. It was a silly joke. And that triggered RSD rejection sensitive dysphoria in me so badly because if it had been a neurotypical, allistic, non-autistic person that said that to me, I would have gotten upset, but I am so used to not getting the jokes. Like I grown up where I'm like the last one laughing or I need the joke explained to me or something. And it would have been just like, oh God, again, but because it was an autistic content creator and I when I left my comment, told them I'm autistic as part of whatever else I had said in the comment, um, they knew they were talking to another autistic person. And for them to say it was a silly joke felt very condescending to me because as a very prominent autistic content creator, they should know that a lot of autistic people struggle with jokes. If they had said, you know, hey, no, I know that's a, it's not true. I sent that, I said that as a satirical joke, then I don't think I would have been triggered as much. But the way they said it was a silly joke made me feel um, extremely humiliated. Again, RSD, a disproportionate reaction to the words that were actually said to me. I know this logically, but sometimes your amygdala and your brain and your feelings don't respond the way that they do. And I know that, you know, I can take mis um, being incorrect or um, having failures or misunderstandings of communication in other instances because in a separately completely different conversation um i was talking to a content creator and they said something 
And again, I didn't agree with what they said. I didn't quite understand. So I asked another clarifying question. I gave some uh, background of reason why I didn't agree with them. And like, can you give me more about why you said what you said? And they did. They just said, oh, um, for one thing, they validated what I said, and then they added on to their point. And I was like, oh, got you. Thank you so much for that clarification. That helps. And I put a little smiley face because this was, you know, again, a conversation on the internet. And they responded, no problem with a smiley face. End of interaction. But with the first one, you know, the silly joke thing, I kind of doubled down on it again and I left more comments and then I had people starting to dogpile on but that's just like the whole internet they were all trying to defend this other content creator and these were all other autistic people just completing uh, um, completely invalidating my autistic experience, which just compounded the issue. I ended up just deleting my comment. I don't like deleting comments on the internet because then people read into the fact that it's like, oh, she was wrong and so she is hiding. And it's because I was so completely misunderstood and I was triggered to a RSD level of um, like a trauma response that the only healthy action for me to take was to delete the comment. I still feel like that autistic content creator could have stepped in again and said, you know, apologized or something. I don't know. It's a pretty big comment or I mean creator. She has way more comments. Maybe she just didn't follow up. Maybe she just wrote that very quickly. You know, we're all human. We all are going to say the wrong thing at some point. I get that. I have very very high cognitive empathy. I can put myself in the person's shoes that did harm to me, which can be a problem. Um, but I mean, she didn't even have to say anything at all. It was the fact that she's like, it was a silly joke. <sighs> and, you know, if I can step outside, step back, use this language, use these acronyms, I can see that I'm having an RSD response. I am blowing this completely out of proportion. It helps, but it doesn't help um, because I still feel like the autistic sense of justice got activated because it was like, I felt like I was right in the situation. I felt like for one thing, the word she said to me felt like miss miss. Uh, spreading misinformation and I had mentioned that in the future please use tone tags or label it as satire and she did not respond to any of that which is what again activated the like I I didn't do anything wrong and yet I felt like her and then all of her supporters were like um it felt like an attack on me. So the RSD just like gets, gets you so activated and it really can bring you down. But setting that whole scenario aside, what I've personally come to feel how RSD shows up for me in my life is when, again, I feel like I have done nothing wrong or I feel like my autistic sense of justice gets activated in those situations um, when somebody corrects me then I feel rejected like I'm 
being told I'm stupid, like a whole slew of extremely, extremely negative feelings that um, make it even really just hard to communicate because they are so disproportionate to what actually happened. I think also it can affect when I have a rejection feeling that is proportionate to a misgrievance against me. So for instance, I had a friend, which I've talked about on the channel before, um, who I thought I was very, very close friends with, but she thought of our relationship more as acquaintances. So we had a mismatch in how we viewed each other. But in one of our very last conversations together, she said some things that were extremely in poor taste and um, harmful. I'm trying to think of the other adjective. My brain is blanking out right now. But um, she actually said it to me in a video chat that was recorded. I was It was on the Marco Polo app, so it records all your videos automatically. It wasn't like I was trying to record her. Um, but that honestly was really good for me for healing because that interaction got recorded. And for some of y'all who don't know, I also have a memory disorder. So when I have really upsetting conversations with people, my brain can't replay them like a lot of people's brains do, which is a good thing sometimes, but also it can be hard when you're trying to heal from past upsets. Um, but in that moment of her rejecting me in a very quite specific and I want to use the word visceral, <laughs> like it was bad. Um, um, I have slow processing. So at that time it was just like, whoa. But a year later I went through and I don't know why, but I rewatched that video and it was like, oh, because at that time I, when she did it, I didn't even feel the RSD to the level that I should have. Um, because my reaction would have been appropriate response. But we're so used to gaslighting ourselves all the time and like, okay, I'm the problem, it was me, you know, which is not always the case. Yes, sometimes we make big screw ups, we're human, but sometimes like it is the other person. And so I was able to rewatch that video. I came across it just one day and I rewatched it with that like distance of it. I'm like, oh, I should have reacted even bigger than I did. So I think being told that my reactions throughout my entire life have been disproportionate, the times when I should have big reactions, it's like I almost do the opposite. So, um, that again is just kind of where I am in the processing of all this. So I'm curious if you identify with having RSD. Um, it's not something that I think some therapists and psychologists will like identify that you have RSD. I don't think it's part of any of like the psych evaluation specifically. Um, just like PDA, pathological demand avoidance profile of autism. I have PDA. I don't think that is included in your actual autism evaluation specifically. I need to go back and reread my autism evaluation now that I understand the language a lot more. Again, it's one of those things when I got handed it, I was like, what does all this mean? And now I have a lot more understanding and vocabulary, but I have not gone back and reread my um, formal diagnosis paperwork because they put a lot of um, notes and details in there. But Whew. anyway, um, yeah, but as for me today, luckily 
I have a very low key. I mean, I'm an adult, right? There's like, I have things that I really need to get done. Um, but today, other than taking my, one of my kids to two appointments, um, most of the housework stuff that I should probably get done, I'm going to ignore other than, you know, the prominent ones, like making sure everyone's getting fed. Um, like laundry is off the list. Cleaning the house is going to be off the list today. Like I'm going to try to spend as much time today in a recovery zone. I am mentally and physically, um, not doing well today. So I need that rest, but I wanted to do this video. And I think sometimes like if you feel like you're wanting to do something, not doing it can almost be as distracting as just going ahead and doing it as long as it doesn't contribute to even more exhaustion. I don't know. Honestly, guys, I don't know. I'm just doing my best here too, but I, I wanted to talk this out. So I hope it helps and relates and um, y'all can kind of in the comments, let me know um, if you experience RSD and to what level. And if you've got any good examples that you feel comfortable sharing um, so that other people can kind of get a grasp on what RSD feels and looks like too. I'd appreciate that. Until the next video, guys. Bye.